Hey everyone, Matt here to show you how to replace the foam woofer surrounds on your Advent Baby Advent 2 speakers. This will work for any other speaker, so even if you just want to replace the foams on some other Advent speaker or another speaker, generally speaking, these steps are the same. The only difference is, is that I don't have shims here. Shims are something that you would use to kind of brace and center the, the woofer cone on the magnet when you're replacing the foam surround so that it, it doesn't move around too much. Generally speaking, you don't need to use those unless the woofer is a lot bigger than these. You can use most any sort of rubber type glue. I have the E6000 glue, which I got in a, a refoam repair kit. There's a glue called Aileen's that seems to be really well liked and I've used that before as well. Um, but basically anything that isn't water-based that's kind of rubbery, like an EVA or something like that, will work for you. So if you don't get glue with your new surround, then you can just pick anything up that is a, a general rubber adhesive that'll work on metal, that'll work on paper, and it'll work on foam. You can just cut the old foam off first, and then we're gonna get that paper gasket off. Don't worry about being super careful with the cone, like pushing it around and stuff, it's not gonna, damage it unless you really yank on it. But So just try not to, to move it around too much when you have the foam off, but it's not gonna break super easily if you shake it around a little bit. You are gonna wanna save this paper gasket. So you just wanna try to get it off in as few pieces as possible. And the easiest way to do that is you can stick the X-Acto knife right under there. Because basically if there's a layer of foam under this gasket that you can just kind of push the knife through, if you get it in there, right? And then it'll come off pretty easily because it's just foam soaked in glue. The purpose of this gasket is basically just to make the edge of the foam surround look better than having glue spilling out from under it. And so as long as the front of it looks fine for reinstallation, you'll be doing great. After much patience, we got that gasket off and I did rip up a little bit of the paper. That's not the end of the world if you rip up a little bit of it. And then this glue that's on the bottom, ideally you get as much of it off as you can but it's not gonna be the end of the world if there's a little bit on here still. When it comes to actually cleaning the old foam and the glue off of the cone, what I like to do is push my finger behind the cone and then put the knife over the top so that you're kind of bracing the cone and then you can just kind of work the knife over it. You don't wanna apply very much pressure because you're just trying to cut off that top layer of foam, but you just wanna brace the cone a little bit so that it's not pushing it too much. Um, it's not gonna be the end of the world if it moves around a little. And you'll probably have to do a couple passes of this around as you get the foam off just to make sure it's it's fully cleaned up. This is not necessary, but I realized that I had it and it makes my life a little easier. This is just an air blaster, but it helps get the little bits of foam off and it just clean it up. But you can use a rag or your finger or tweezers or really, really anything. But you just wanna make sure that you get the whole layer of foam off the top of the glue. Don't try to get through the glue and into the paper of the cone. Just keep your knife right along the kind of edge of the glue because you don't want to damage the paper cone. Now we're going to move to the frame and the frame you want to get very clean. It needs to have all the glue and all the foam off of it. And so you can just because of the paper gasket that we saved from earlier, the fact that it's going to cover the whole frame, it doesn't really matter if you scrape up that frame very much. So if you're going along with your knife and you're, you're kind of leaning into it and you're just scraping and you're starting to see paint come off the frame, that's going to be okay because you're going to cover it back up with the new foam and the paper gasket. Because the biggest thing with these is since this is a portless speaker, there's no air movement in and out of the speaker. And so it's actually going to affect more than the consistency of the foam on the, the woofer. Um, or other things like that, it's gonna affect the sound a lot if there's air leaks in your speakers. If you set the foam on top of the speaker, you can kind of see how far it covers of the metal frame, and you can say, oh, cool. So I wanna get all the glue off at least to that extent. Um, and then, you, so if there's any glue like left in the very corner of the frame where your foam's not gonna be sitting, you don't need to worry about getting that off unless you are OCD like me, and I got it off because <laughs> It was annoying, I don't know. You don't wanna secure the foam to the frame and the cone at the same time because you need to be able to center the voice coil that's attached to the bottom of the cone inside of the magnet. We're gonna open our glue not over the speaker because sometimes it likes to erupt out. So I would always recommend you do that and just kinda test your glue, see how fast it comes out so you can get a nice line. Because what we're going for is a nice continuous line all the way around the edge of the cone. We got a little bubble at the end there. And you just wanna make sure there's no breaks in the line. So we're just gonna just kind of spin the speaker and squeeze some glue. And the further the glue is towards the edge, the less likely you're gonna have it kind of spill out under the foam onto your cone when you apply the foam 
And so if you can just keep a nice bead of it right around the edge of the cone, just go ahead and do a double check back over it and make sure you got glue all the way around kind of in the reflection of the light. Yeah, a little spot right there. That's cool. And the reason you want that constant line of glue is so that you don't have any air leaks when you put this all back together. Put the paper gasket on top of the foam and just to, to center it and then you could set it down set your paper and set your foam on it you can kind of see like okay we got to pull that pull that over a little bit that has to get pulled in and you can just use some tweezers or something like that to kind of push the foam down under and then once it's generally centered you can just take your foam paper gasket back off and kind of push it down but you just want to make sure that it's there's no kind of how there's a dark line here but no dark line on this side you just you're going to want to push this down and over a little bit just to make sure that it's actually circular on the cone rather than being pushed to a different side so you just kind of work that in. This is why you want to use a glue that does not dry quickly because this tacks up for a nice while. I've heard people say contact cement can also work really well, um, but you can stick one finger behind the cone and then just use your thumb and kind of run along and then just recenter your foam and then run along. So now that we have this generally lined up, the first thing you want to do is kind of lift up the woofer gently so that the foam comes off the frame and then you can gently push down. And as long as you don't feel any voice curl rub, you should be good to go. It should be self, kind of self-centering it, itself, but you just want to keep checking that as long as uh, you're working through this. And now we can use the butt of our tweezers or the butt of the razor blade, whatever kind of flat, dull object you have that isn't covered in glue that'll just tamp this down really nicely. Hold in spots that are, seem to be bubbling up a lot. And just make sure that they're as centered as possible on that glue line. All right, and it's starting to tack up pretty well, so you can just spin it around. There's lots of different ways to do this, but the general idea is make sure that there are no bubbles of foam. And the easiest way to check that is if you tip the driver like this and you look along the edge of it, as long as you don't see any air gaps kind of right at the edge, then you're good to go in that section of foam. And so I just like to kind of roll it and look at the bottom of the foam and just make sure, okay, there's no air gaps. And you can just let that sit for a couple minutes just to really harden up the glue and let it cure a little bit faster. You could also just, if you don't have it under a heat lamp, you could just leave it um, for a couple hours and let it cure just to make sure that it's really secured on there because you just want to make sure it's not going to unadhere if you push the speaker down. In that meantime, while we were kind of waiting for that to cure, we actually cleaned the other housing and the cone, which is the best way to do it. If you can just spend, you know, 20 minutes or whatever cleaning your other speaker, then you can come right back to this one. Generally speaking, as long as your glue is, is going to harden up in that time, it's better to wait an hour or two if you can, um, but you can always just clean the other one and then come back a couple hours later. So. What we're gonna do now is apply glue under the outside edge of the foam. Kind of the easiest way to do that is I use a pair of tweezers, you stick them in the screw hole and then you just kind of lift up the foam and then just peel it up there. Get the tweezer nicely under it. This is why you want to make sure this glue is nice and cured because if you're kind of peeling it off the cone and the glue is not cured, then it's gonna obviously peel the foam off the cone. And then you're gonna just place a continuous line of glue all the way around the edge of this basket. You don't need to be too sparse with the glue. You can be a little generous with it. But you just wanna make sure that it's one continuous line with no breaks. And then when you get to the screw holes, you don't wanna skip around that. You really wanna get a line on the inside edge of the screw hole and around it so that the foam will sit all the way around that screw hole with no leaks. Next thing you wanna do is just test, once again, your voice coil still centered. That's gonna take a little bit to cure, so you can actually, or not to cure, but to tack up. So the next thing you can do is just pop a line of glue on your paper gasket here, because it's gonna take a second for this to tack up. This does not have to be pretty, and this does not have to be a constant line, because this is just gonna go on top of the foam and kind of secure the edge of the foam to the metal housing and secure the gasket to the metal housing as well. So you just wanna use a generous amount of glue. Still, no voice core rub, so we're doing all right. So you just kind of keep tamping it down just like we did on the inside of the cone. Line up the paper gasket with your screw holes. All the little gaps here in the side, which the screw holes are currently covered in foam. But you can just take your paper gasket and squeeze it down into place. On this one, it seems to be pushing on the edge of that foam surround a little bit, which I noticed is just kind of a, that's the size the size is not perfect for this foam surround. 
So that's why it's doing that, but it's not really the end of the world. And then in this case, now that we've kind of applied some pressure, once again, check out voice coil, no rubbing. So what I usually do, you can get paper clips, or not paper clips, uh, clothes pens, or something else to clamp this down if you want. Or in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and actually flip it upside down. Before you actually just set this down, you want to really vice grip it with your fingers before you just flip it over and let that kind of take care of the ceiling. Um, you wanna just make sure you apply a nice even pressure, even if that's just kind of putting it, cupping your hands around it um, in a couple different spots because it does lift up a little bit and then push it down for a little bit into the table, apply a lot of pressure onto it, especially just make sure you have it on a flat surface. The glue is still tacky in there. You can see it goes up and down and you just wanna make sure that that does not happen. And you can also kind of tamp down the foam in the speaker holes or the, the screw holes rather, just to make sure that they're nice and sealed all the way around the hole with glue. Then you can just let this cure for a couple hours. Um, overnight, basically now it's done. Uh, and so if you repeat this process with each speaker, you're gonna be able to just clip them back on your wires, put them back in and listen to music. But you wanna give it about 24 hours to let that glue fully dry before you go blasting any tunes. Otherwise you might just blow the foam right off the speakers. So give it at least overnight. 12 to 24 hours is a great range, um, but it's a pretty simple process. You know how to get it back in, attach the wires to it. If you do have any questions about this process or anything else with stereos, feel free to leave a comment below. I love restoring old stereos. And if you found value from this video, please feel free to subscribe and like the video. It helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching.